Hi, and welcome to the ever popular mailbag segment where I open my email that people have sent me. I've only got uh, two items today, so we won't overdo it. Let's check them out. The first one comes from L Growth, and I recognize the name. That'd be Logan Growth. So thanks, Logan. He's a fellow Aussie up in Queensland. I recognize the, uh, that's what the Q stands for, Queensland. Well, those funny Queenslanders. Ah, shouldn't say too much. That's where my mum's from. Anyway, let's open this sucker up and uh, see what we have here. Oh, by the way, he sent it to that crazy Aussie bloke. P.O. Box 7949, Borkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153. That's where you should send your stuff. So, thanks, Logan. Let's uh, open it up. I have no idea. He hasn't uh, clued me up that he'd be sending this. So, let's go. What have we got? Yeah, nothing else. We've just got bubble wrap. Yeah. I see something in a box. Oh. Here's my trusty Victorinox Mini Champ here. There we go, that's better. Arr. What do we got? What do we got? Ta da! Hi Dave, thought you might be interested in a Renesis promo board. They sent me one, however, a second unit turned up a week after, so hey, enjoy! Thank you very much, Logan. What have we got? We've got a Renesis RL78G13 promo board. Advanced features such as ADC operation without CPU wake up. Oh, similar to the uh, Gecko that um, we had a look at uh, several weeks back. High performance core running at uh, 1.27 DMIPS per megahertz and uh, system cost reduction with on chip data flash and configurable high speed oscillator system safety functions to support. IEC 6730. What's IEC 6730? I don't uh, uh, recognize that one off the top of my head. I have to check it out. And thankfully, it's not one of those hideous uh, heat sealed packages. You just open it like that and it opens just like it damn well should. Those heat sealed ones, they suck big time. Let me tell you, what are we getting here? We get, uh, yeah, it's promo board, yeah, whatever. Bit of cardboard. We get a CD. Oh, Get a screwdriver, flathead, eh. um, and we get a USB cable. Jeez, how many bloody USB cables have I got? Oh, and check out this ridiculous part number. YRPBRL78G13, you gotta be kidding me. Who thought up that rubbish? Anyway, it turns out that this is a, um, a uh, development uh, slash a uh, demo board really for uh, the RL78 series micros. And it's pretty obvious why they gave you the screwdriver in the kit, because they've got a 10 turn pot on there. There's a couple of LEDs and jumpers, and uh, that's about it in some sort of uh, dip um, arrangement here, presumably so you can put some headers on and plug it into a breadboard, but they don't give you the header strips in the kit. Um, bummer. And apparently it is, um, oh, oh, look, made in Europe. Beauty. Not made in China. Awesome. I love it. ROS compliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, apparently it comes uh, pre-programmed with um, uh, firmware to be used with the demo software on the disk to test out the low power capabilities of these micros. Well, let's check it out. And the first thing I did is Google IEC 6730 and I came up with this uh, Renesis uh, web page about it and uh, it looks like it's a standard for um, appliance uh, for reliability um, in uh, appliance product design. It's got three different classes. Class A, uh, control functions not intended to be relied upon for the safety. Class B is control functions which are intended to prevent unsafe um, operation of controlled devices and class C is control functions which are intended to prevent uh, special hazards. So appliances such as washing machines, dishwashers, dryers, uh, you know, microwave ovens and things like that, they would be classified as class B. And it seems that uh, all of the microcontroller manufacturers have something on this. Here's uh, Freescale, and they talk about the safety standard for household appliances, the three different classes. They've got a neat little uh, pop-up thing here, and they talk about invariable memory, they talk about addressing and external comms and uh, all sorts of things. It's interrupt handling. Um, it's, it's rather neat. Confirm that the CPU clock frequency is correct, not too slow, not too fast, no clock. So 
all of this stuff goes into um, selecting a microcontroller to be used in one of these uh, white goods or uh, products to meet the IEC 60730 standard. And here's a white paper from Texas Instruments which uh, showed up at, at near the top of the uh, Google listing for this and it goes into the various uh, classes as well and it goes into the requirements of the compliance and how their um, system level uh, software actually supports that like CPU registers stuck at fault and things like that and uh, uh, it goes into talking about um, because the firmware plays a critical role in the self-test, uh, the IEC standard does not specify how the tests are made, only that they be executed successfully. There you go. And I'm sure anyone who has uh, been involved with designing uh, commercial white goods or commercial products like that goes, yeah, I know all about IEC 607030, but... There you go. I kind of sort of knew there were standards for these things, but I didn't know the uh, number and I haven't really been involved in that. So there you go. You learn something new every day. All right, I just installed the software and I chose the quick start uh, option instead of uh, doing all of the tools. So here you go. And it popped up with the quick start guide here. Here's our little board. Um, it looks like that's done in uh, Altium Designer because that uh, 3D model there is uh, very Altium Designer-like. So I think that's what they've used to do this. Here we go, and uh, there's some demo software with uh, graphs that uh, it looks like measures uh, voltage and temperature, perhaps. Anyway, let's uh, run the software and see what we get. And it looks like, um, oh, here we go, low power tab. Low power modes can be entered by directly clicking halt, stop, or snooze. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and it looks low current consumption can be measured when the low power modes are selected. Jumper J3 is used for current measurement. There you go. You can remove the uh, jumper and you can measure the consumption directly of the micro, just like we did on that gecko board. Excellent. And I won't actually bother measuring the current, of course. Uh, but anyway, here's the table just uh, in run mode, 5.1 uh, milliamps. And that looks like it's running at 32 uh, megahertz. And uh, halt mode, 1 milliamp. I'm not sure the 32 megahertz oscillator is on. The 32 kilohertz oscillator is on doing various stuff, so what's the difference here? I don't... Ah, right, oh, the CPU itself is actually uh, switched off, so uh, the main CPU is not actually executing in stop mode. 620, oh, sorry, 620 nanoamps, yes. Um, and what are we doing in 620 nanoamps? We're running our 32 kilohertz uh, oscillator, and we're running our real-time clock, and, that's, and we're doing some RAM stuff, so that's about it. Um... And snooze no, mode, one microamp, and what are we doing there? 32K, and ADC is on periodically, so you're doing some sort of data logging or something like that, uh, presumably directly via DMA into the RAM. Once again, very similar to the um, uh, Gecko devices. Wah, 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 wah. Device driver software not successfully installed. I plug the device in, and uh, I get... Nothing. It says unidentified device. I can't even read the device code out of the thing. What the hell's going on? I got my blue lead uh, happening on the board. I've tried a different USB port and uh, I did the quick start um, software installation, which went fine. What a fail. Well, that sucks ass, really. I'm not going to bother dicking around. Ah, oh, look, it's just, it's, the program just shut down. you got to be kidding me. I don't think I'm going to bother. going to open the next package. Bugger this. It's from uh, Craig uh, Rodine from uh, ChronoU. Thank you very much, Craig. Um, he's from uh, Monument. There you go, Monument in uh, CO, which is Colorado, I believe. Monument, Colorado. Sounds like a nice place. Hello to all my uh, viewers in Colorado. Now, let's uh, open this sucker up and uh, see what's inside. Well, I know what's inside. It, uh, it's written down here. USB logic analyzer. Woo Claims it's 190 bucks worth. So let's have a look. USB logic analyzer. Brilliant. Absolutely. Ah, this is just. I yeah. hate these stupid. Uh, where does it open? How does this thing open? Here we go. Let's try this. Oh, there we go. Tape along this. Yeah. All right. Fail. There we go. Now we've got to open. Bloody tape. All right, here we go. Ta-da! Ooh, chrono view. Let's have a look. Hello, Mr. Jones. Please find enclosed our 8-bit 
USB logic analyzer kit. Is it a kit? Build it yourself kit or is it fully built? Interface software uh, for Mac, Win and Linux, so it is cross-platform, um, is included and also available for direct downloading from chronoview.com. I will resist, resist the temptation to pitch the product to you and instead hope you have time to evaluate and review this tool. Well, we'll certainly do that here on the mailbag. So thank you very much, Craig. And by the way, I had a couple of people bitch uh, last time um, about the mailbag segment that it was just one big, uh, you know, advert, one just long advertisement. It's just an advertisement for products. Well, like a duh, you know, of, of course it is. People send me shit and I open it up and I look at it. And if it's good, I, you know, I'm going to say it's good. If it's bad, I'm going to say it's bad and we're going to have a look at it. And, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. Of course this is effectively, um, and an advertisement, you send me stuff and well, you can, you know, live or die right here, live opening on the mailbag. And you wanna know what the funny thing is, yeah, I only get people saying that sort of thing if it's a product they didn't like, for whatever reason, they just didn't like it, so they bitch, oh, it's just an advertisement for the company. Well, bloody hell, I don't get any uh, complaints about that when it's a good product, give me a break. Anyway, sorry about that rant, let's have a look at the uh, chrono view. ChronoView LA8, 8-bit, 8 so it's a pretty, um, looks like it's a low-end uh, price, low-end logic analyzer, ooh. And it's in the uh, sub $200 category. Oh, that's nice. And uh, let's look at that, what else have we got? We've got some, ah, oh, color-coded um, um, easy hooks, excellent. We've got our software, uh, with software, cable, there we go, and we've got our USB cable again, ooh. It's a um, A type, it's not a mini B. It's a rather nice looking pouch, I like it. It's got a little thing in there where you can put your easy hooks and uh, your test cable and Velcro opens. It's quite nice for the uh, price actually. I wouldn't have expected, uh, ooh, ooh, alloy case. I like it, extruded aluminium case. Oh, that feels good. What else we got in there? Oh, we've got a, <laughs> We've got a shoulder strap. You want to carry your logic analyzer around on your shoulder strap. Bit of, uh, stri uh, you know, uh, nerd cred on the street there. Oh yeah, I have to, what's in your bag? Oh, my 8-bit logic analyzer, mate. Well now, I'm certainly quite impressed with this. It's built like a brick dunny. It really is. It's uh, quite nice, solid construction. The chrono view. Um, don't know about the font on the end there. That's a bit, I haven't really seen a, font like that in a product in a long time. I have no idea what these um, LEDs mean, I-A-T-D. Mm. There's enough room on there to print the full um, uh, word, so well, yeah, it's a pretty non-eventful, but that's, you know, a logic analyzer. I think we're going to have to crack this thing open. And what's inside? Well, it's probably just a uh, FPGA with a uh, USB interface and an uh, input buffer, and that's uh, probably about it. Anyway, in this sort of uh, price range, that's uh, typically what you get, but anyway, let's crack it open. Hmm. Here it is, it should just slide out. And it does, whoa, Xilinx FPGA time. And there's no real uh, surprises on the board, except I was uh, wrong in that uh, this is not an FPGA. It's a Xilinx uh, CPLD, and, and specifically a Cool Runner 2 and XC 2C 256, a 256 macro cell CPLD. Because, well, this, you know, it doesn't need to do um, something incredibly uh, complex. So you can get away with a cheaper um, CPLD for something like this. We've got an FT. Uh, 245 um, uh, USB to parallel uh, interface that's got a built in uh, FIFO buffer so it buffers the data so you don't actually uh, lose anything when you're continuously transmitting. transmitting. We've got a 64 megabit uh, DRAM down here which means uh, 8 meg samples per channel. It's also got uh, pre-triggering. I think it's up to a couple hundred K pre-triggering uh, data memory as well, and uh, I'm not sure what that device there is. It's a PT701502. It looks like uh, just a voltage regulator or something like that. So, um, pretty much, uh, well, there's the main oscillator, of course, and that's 
pretty much all there is to it. There's the internal uh, JTAG interface, so if you wanted to uh, hack this thing, I'm sure you could. We've got our LEDs and our input side here. We've got an octal uh, buffer, of course, because this is eight channel. It's just a uh, 7.4 TTL um, series uh, octal, uh, 2.4.4 octal buffer. It's a 7.4 uh, LV uh, TH series, which uh, is compatible with uh, different logic families. So you can use it on five volts and 3.3 volt or uh, possibly even lower uh, input compatible. But one thing to note, there's no um, input pull down resistors uh, at all. It's just, uh, or input protection or anything like that. It's just connected directly to the input of the 244. That's not the best. And of course, there's nothing fancy in this thing like adjustable uh, level uh, trigger threshold or anything like that. And it's just, you know, direct uh, CMOS uh, TTL uh, input buffered. That's it. Doesn't even have an external clock input so it's timing analysis only it can't do state analysis but with 100 uh, meg samples per second and um, eight meg samples of memory um it's you know it's a handy little uh, logic analyzer a little eight channel logic analyzer and it's priced accordingly of course it's in the uh, low end price back bracket for these sort of things but really um in logic analyzer what it's all about really is the software is the main thing and this board is uh, Rev A2 and copyright 2010. So it's uh, been around for a couple of years. And indeed the silkscreen uh, date code of uh, 1510 backs that up um, as does the uh, QC sticker down here of uh, 1910. Uh, so presumably uh, this thing was manufactured in, uh, and tested in uh, 2010. So it could have been uh, old stock they sent me. I'm not sure what's going on there. And if we have a quick look at the uh, ChronoView website, uh, here's the specs. As I said, up to 100 meg, 100 meg samples per second, 8.4 uh, meg samples per channel, uh, 256k uh, pre-trigger channel capability, um, signal loading, they claim is roughly 5 uh, picofarads, um, plus 100 microamps state holding current, um, and uh, the input voltage ranges from 0.5 volts to um, six volts and a logic one threshold does go to uh, two from two volts to 5.5 so you could uh, use uh, any uh, logic standard within that range so certainly easily able to do uh, 2.5 3.3 uh, or five or uh, five volts uh, TTL interface and it's a USB uh, 2 full speed interface and they claim it has um, I squared C SPI and UART uh, bus support as well whether or not that's actually in the uh, hardware or whether or not that's um just software analysis later i assume it's uh it's software based so there you go uh, let's have a look at um they've got a what's in the box and probably <laughs> it just tells us what's on the board and we just looked at that so there you go we already know everything we need to know about that all right, so I've got the uh, software running here. It uh, was uh, painless installation. The driver's no problem, and the uh, program pops up here. Not a problem. Now, I've actually got it uh, physically connected to an SPI uh, bus here, and I haven't labeled my uh, channels, but obviously this is the uh, clock up the top here. This is the data, and this is the, um, this is the select pin. And uh, here it is. You, uh, we've got various uh, zoom up here. It's pretty basic, and uh, let's see if the tooltips pop up. No, they did before. I swear they popped up. There we go. Acquire data and acquisition setup. Uh, you can refresh it. I wonder how quickly it refreshes because the acquire data takes quite some time because it's got to, presumably, it's reading the whole uh, 8 megabytes or 64 megabits over the USB there. And uh, presumably, we could uh, re can we refresh that quickly. I'm not sure uh, what the deal is with the uh, refresh is whether or not it uh, resamples the data or not. I um, guess I'd have to read the actual manual, but uh, the bus um, setup, um, we can enable various uh, things here. We can change, can we change the channel? Yes, we can change the channel color. We can change uh, label the signal name. So if you know that's uh, S clock, of course, you can change that and it instantly becomes um, S clock. Okay, I was just about to uh, complain that the bus setup here is actually quite uh, you know quite convoluted quite manual to actually uh, set this thing up and then I figured out that they've got what's called the canned bus setup which is basically a template and you choose your bus type and 
it makes it easy for you. So there you go, SPI, number of bits, it's, you know, so it all sets up relatively easily. And there we go, I just uh, captured my uh, SPI bus there using the automated um, uh, setup capability and it's set up S-Clock and uh, Mozzie and uh, MISO and, you know, it's all uh, set up there and it gives you the decoded data, which is uh, F6 in this, this particular case uh, based on that clock and you know it's it's okay it does the job um this but this uh logic analyzer software isn't exactly uh blowing my socks off but it's it's basic and it does the job and for the price i guess you can't complain at all so what happens if we go in here and we set say our state to uh uh our miso input here which is always uh high because i haven't actually got it hooked up it's always high there and uh, let's try and trigger off that and see what happens. And really, the triggering is not advanced um, at all. It's just, you know, there's no sequence uh, triggering by the looks of it. I, if it is in there, I can't find any uh, sequence-based triggering. It's just a basic uh, single state across all eight uh, channels, either, you know, high, low, or uh, zero, that, or uh, any um, state. So, you know, it, it really is basic uh, triggering stuff. So let's trigger on that, and it should not actually uh, trigger there. So if we acquire data, aha, there you go. That's what I wanted to test. It's not actually in initializing and downloading the data. Although I think there is a, um, it's waiting because it's waiting for that trigger and that trigger is uh, clearly not happening. So how do I stop that? I thought I saw a setting for a timeout or something like that in there. How do I press escape? Maybe, oops. No, how do you stop uh, data acquisition initiated hardware activity? No, well, it's non-responsive. How do I stop this? Uh, <laughs> how do I stop the thing if I didn't want to trigger? Don't tell me it's going to lock up. That's really quite terrible. It's just sitting there waiting for the trigger. It's not finding it, but it's not surely... You'd be able to press escape. Urgh. Better stop the recording and uh, try and figure this out. Hang on. Well, there you go. I just uh, shorted that pin to low and made it trigger. And, well, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to, uh, without, uh, you know, getting Windows to shut down the actual uh, program. Um, that's really annoying if it can't do that. Maybe there is. Um, I'm not going to investigate it. Um, but that could potentially be uh, quite annoying. And it looks like, um, I don't think you can actually uh, set the data uh, depth because um, like sometimes you don't need that much memory. If you just want to sample quickly and uh, you know, you just uh, want to um, update this thing, then um, you know, you don't want to wait to download the full 64 meg samples like that. So, or meg uh, bits, um, eight meg samples like that because it does quite take an annoying a rather annoying little um, amount of time there. You saw, saw that message that said evaluating bus there. It was obviously uh, decoding that and it hasn't um, centered my stuff on the screen because it's all the way over here um, because my trigger condition, that's the pre, I assume that's all the pre-trigger data in there. So it's automatically captured that and there's my uh, SPI bus. So you can see the advantage of the deep memory though, but um, I, you know, we can zoom across here like this, hang on, what's going on here, the, the decoding has to catch up there, so I'm not sure what happened, uh, I think there's a glitch in my SPI bus, I'm using a demo uh, board to generate uh, SPI, so like, well, there we go, we can put uh, a marker there, can we zoom in, yeah, we can use our um, scroll, our mouse uh, scrolly center wheel to no it looks like it just moves it from side to side we have to use the plus minus buttons it's not the user interface is not massive see i would have ex expected it center around that line there where i had it but it didn't like expand around that line but it it, it doesn't um yeah i think the the gui needs some work you can actually analyze your data um but it's not it's not the greatest. Look at all that. I don't know what's going on there. So I don't know if that's, I assume it's not the uh, analyzer. That could certainly be a uh, glitch in my uh, demo board because it's designed to uh, do that 
sort of stuff, I believe. But um, yeah, so it works and it's got search capabilities. You can actually go in there and uh, you can search for um, a particular um, state or something like that. So uh, whether or not they occur simultaneously, locate occurrences separately. So, you know, it's got a rudimentary uh, search capability, but there you go. That's the user interface. Um, I'm not uh, bowled over by it um, at all, but it seems to do the job. And uh, for that sort of price category, uh, USB logic analyzer, I guess it's not too bad. I'm not going to um, compare it with other logic analyzers on the market. Don't ask me. I haven't look at, looked at other low-cost um, logic analyzers. This is not a review. This is just a mailbag uh, quick look, really. So there's quite a few things that this logic analyzer seems to lack. You know, data uh, compression, sample compression, uh, for example, if you exhaust your, uh, you know, if you have um, very widely spaced uh, packets and you're trying to, you know, capture a very small packet, which is, you know, tens of seconds apart or something like that, then you're going to run out of memory pretty darn quickly. Because if you go into the uh, acquisition setup, you'll see that uh, at 50 nanoseconds there where we can change our uh, sample time to 50 nanoseconds we're only going to acquire half a second of uh, data so you know if you're um, trying to capture events larger than that you need a um, USB logic analyzer with uh, sample compression this one doesn't have it it's very basic uh, it takes a bit of advanced um, firmware in there to actually do uh, sample compression not advanced but it takes additional um, uh, hardware capability in the device firmware capability to actually do that, usually implemented inside an FPGA. Um, not sure if it would be possible to do that in a CPLD, actually. It, it might be, but uh, FPGA would certainly be the solution for that. And it's just pretty rudimentary triggering. There's no state triggering, as I said. And, well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real bare-bones logic analyzer, but it seems to do the job. Might be uh, possibly a bit on the expensive side for what it does. I don't know. I'm not going to uh, compare it directly with the other ones. Um, but it does come in a very solid, nice case. I like the case. And if we have a quick look at the uh, price here, the basic uh, kit is $129. I presume that's uh, US and wouldn't include shipping. And the deluxe kit is $100. $49. So um, it's uh, cheaper than uh, what they had marked on the uh, package there. So certainly a reasonably priced logic analyzer. But if it's a value for money, I don't know. You'd have to compare it with the others on the market. So that's the mailbag segment. I hope you liked it. And remember, if you do like it, give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. And if you want to discuss any of this stuff, hop on over to the EV blog forum. Catch you next time.